River with Jeremy Maxson. Hey Jeremy, give me a look. There you go, Hi buddy. <laughs> yeah, so Jeremy, this is one of the things that you want to do when you come to the river and stuff. It's, you can't really tell what insects are biting on or what's hatching or that. Well, just reach in, pick up the rock, turn it over. It's definitely helpful if you can uh, get to know your insects that way uh, by taking a few minutes each time you go fishing and just uh, picking up a rock. Uh, probably some of the best spots are in the riffles uh, like this. It's the most oxygenated water um, and uh, also usually the coldest water. So uh, there's usually a lot more life. Um, you may not get every bug that's in the water, but uh, you're certainly going to find them bottoms of all these rocks are just covered with different insects, um, midge larva, free range caddis larva, uh, should be some squalor nymphs in and around some of these rocks, uh, stoneflies are definitely going to be found in the, in the faster water sections. Uh, Alright Jeremy, we just picked up a nice rock, we can see it. An awesome squalor right yeah, there. You got a squalor nymph hiding under the rocks yeah. there, you can see that guy. Um, definitely about a size, a size eight uh, nymph, um, and uh, you can handle. They're usually holding right there. Gonna just walk all over you. Um, pretty active though. They're gonna want to keep moving, try to find that water. Okay, holding right there. Excellent. So about how long is that thing? Uh, he's going to be about an inch long from the tip of his nose just to the back of his body there. Uh, if you put the, the, what they call the surge sea or the, the tail and antenna on there, he's definitely a little longer, but uh, uh, about a size 8 hook. And if you were going to tie that uh, uh, for obviously the more shallow sections like what we found him in, I wouldn't use any weight or just either a little weight, just a heavy shank hook. Um, otherwise, if you're going to a deep hole, you definitely want to put some lead or, or a bead head on that guy. All right. Excellent. Well, we tied up the adult squ uh, squala pattern the other night, so the nymphs will, how, about how long do you think that will be before it turns into an adult? Uh, right now we're uh, on the Hawaii just a couple weeks away uh, from hatching here, so they're definitely getting active. They're definitely coming up into the shallow parts here. And uh, what they'll do is climb out, uh, usually at night, so that way they're less prone to get eaten, but they'll crawl out on the rocks on the shore. Even if there's rocks that are sticking up above the water surface, um, they'll crawl up on those during the night, and then uh, the nipple skin will split, and then the adult will, will crawl out. Awesome. All right, we just uh, found one of the patterns that we've been looking for, one of the adult squalas. This is, uh, we found the nymph. We showed you how to find the nymphs. And uh, Jeremy was looking around the rock after he caught that last fish there. So but here's a, an adult squala, and I'll let Jeremy take it from here. We'll get some close-ups of it. And you should tell us about the squala, Jeremy. Absolutely. This one is a, a female here. Set the camera down. This is a female squala, um, and uh, it'd be about a size eight, two X long, uh, just like the pattern that we were tying. Um, and uh, you can dar definitely see the dark brown, uh, dark olive, uh, almost black colored body on it, um, gray wings, and uh, and again this one's a female and and there you can see it's got a real yellowish, um, even olive colored body. So uh, this one in particular is really dark olive in the back, probably because of the egg sac in the back. Um, the eggs are actually black and we'll look at those in a minute. The upper body though uh, you can see is actually got quite a bit of light olive, yellow, and even a little bit of orange around the legs. Um, so definitely that's what that's the part of the body the fish are going to see when you're fishing is that underbody. They're not going to see the top necessarily. And you can see here there's the tail, and you see there's a big black egg sac on the back there. And in our pattern we use black foam to represent that egg sac, and again it helps to float the hook. So, but a very active fly. Um, they don't hold still for long. And uh, you can see that this one was uh, on this one is actually out in a rock in the middle of the uh, river. Um, so she didn't, chances are, didn't even crawl out on the land; just crawled out onto this rock to hatch out. And uh, hopefully, we'll get into those a little bit later this afternoon. 
So how would they? Uh, how would you fish a squala on the water, Jeremy? You know the best way. Uh, dead drift or definitely dead drift, and you can skate them too. Like I say, they are active. They do run on the water, so be nothing wrong if you had a heavily hackled pattern or one that you put a lot of floatant on it. Um, you could throw it out uh, cross stream or even downstream and just give it uh, an upward motion with your rod tip and that'll skate the pattern across the surface. Uh, or another way is just get in some fast water riffles which we've got behind us, maybe we'll show you. Um, and just throw it up into those riffles and let it drift back um, into the slower pools. And those fish nine times out of ten are going to be sitting waiting for something for that fast water to bring them to eat. Um, also in and around the rocks. Um, and then you can also fish right up against the banks in some of the holding water where those uh, squalls will be, where they go and hatch out of the banks, they'll be near the bank also. Excellent. This is, this is typical of some of the type of water you want to fish squalls in. Riffles, pocket water, fairly fast moving water. little shoots that are coming through there right behind each rock on either side of each rock Jeremy's just working each rock right behind it off probably both sides We'll just keep walking our way right up this river. All the way up through, fishing behind every rock. And He's out about 20 more or about 15 more feet. Which Straight out. Did he move? Yeah, he moved out. So he's out further. Yeah. That's it. He saw it. Awesome, I got it. Very cool. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so he's blind in one eye on his left side. Oh. Wayne must have hooked him. <laughs> Let's see if we can get the fly out of this guy. A nice little take. That was a beautiful guy. take, yeah. It uh he come up and just slurped it right in. Very sweet rod lift. So we like to keep him in the water. It's nice to take pictures of him. I mean that's part of the fishing experience. And one of the nice ways to take your picture is to make sure that you already have it figured out before the fish comes out of the water. So, you know, like Jeremy's getting all situated right now and the fish is in the water, he's still healthy. We'll have him hold him up. We'll get us a nice picture. Very nice fish, Jeremy. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Sorry. Looks nice. Very cool. Looks really good. Hang on to that just a second.